Hey guys, before I begin this breakdown, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, Manscaped.com. For all of your male grooming needs, they have an awesome 20% off special for their Perfect Bag 2.0. Go ahead and use the promo code SAM20 when you place your order. The NFL is looking for playmakers. Teams are constantly looking for that next level talent and they'll do whatever it takes to get that person. In this NFL draft, Kyler Murray is that player. At roughly 5'10 and just over 200 pounds, he doesn't have the traditional build of your franchise quarterback. However, he's in strong contention to be one of the first passers off the board on Thursday night. At Oklahoma, the Sooners ran a lot of play action, run pass options, and those bubble pop plays that made Baker Mayfield famous just a season ago. They ran a lot of these same concepts with Murray at the helm. During the majority of this season, Murray was constantly given clean pockets and open throwing lanes. There's no denying that the coaching and system they have down in Norman is crazily effective. While this may be the case, his most impressive trait by far is his ability to improvise. Every time he gets the ball, he has a playmaking ability that will scare the hell out of defenses. The way he can effortlessly whip his arm to throw long passes, to the way he can recognize and quickly evade pressure to pick up first downs makes him an incredibly fun prospect to watch. As I was going through his film to look for trends for this video, that improvisational ability kept sticking out to me. This play versus TC illustrates that. Lining up in pistol formation with the trips look on the right, Oklahoma ran play action. They were attempting to set up a pop pass to the tight end after he faked the block on the right side of the formation. The edge rusher immediately claps on the quarterback. This forced Murray to scramble, use his speed to avoid the initial pressure, had the awareness to keep his eyes down the field, and he found his receiver up the right sideline. His calm under pressure really stands out to me. Even though he was getting chased, he directed his tight end to continue up the field by pointing and made an accurate throw on the move. What consistently impressed me throughout my study was how he made every throw and decision look effortless. He would scan the field, turning his body to sell a different route to a safety, and then he would come back to fire the ball to a different receiver. He did that versus Baylor on this 30-yard touchdown. After the snap, Oklahoma ran a three-verts concept down the field. They were attacking the Baylor's two safety coverage on this play. Both of the right receivers running fade and seam routes stretched the deep right safety, forcing him into a no-win situation. Murray then turned and sold the deep pass down the sideline in order to get him to commit outside. He then fired the ball into the back of the end zone, allowing his receiver to snag the ball to the air for the score. These type of casually awesome plays were littered throughout the games I watched. Before I turned on his tape, I heard that he was a one-read-and-run type of quarterback, but that's definitely not true. He made full field reads and progressions. After starting on the right side and seeing that nobody was open, Murray came back across the field to accurately throw a pass to convert for the first down. Check out his placement on this pass. He put the ball on the outside of his receiver. This allowed him to turn and run up the field in the opposite direction of the cornerback, gaining more yards. Now, setting up your receiver to hit them in stride is one thing, but using your ball placement to allow them to secure the catch is another thing. He has that ability as well. Instead of placing the ball in front of the receiver where a safety could come down and break up this pass, Murray placed the ball in the back shoulder of his target. He allowed his receiver to box out the safety. Yes, his receiver did take a pretty decent shot on this pass, but the throw allowed him to haul in the catch to continue this drive. Throughout my tracking, I was constantly impressed with Murray's placement and accuracy. He does at times force his receivers to adjust to the ball, but more often than not, it's in the right place at the right time. Occasionally, he'll drift while throwing and that'll cause him to sail a pass, but again, the ball is usually thrown at chest height where he intends his receiver to run. When he does miss, it's usually when he's placing the ball to receiver on a post route at the center of the field. He simply doesn't lead them horizontally far enough. Based on my tracking, Murray is better on seam and fade routes than he is on post and corners. However, he's still widely effective on all three levels of the field. There were a number of just picture-perfect passes, the ones that sailed from the deep heavens down into the palms of his receiver in stride. This throw against Texas Tech is one of my absolute favorites. After faking the handoff, he immediately looked right to Marquise Brown. By the time the ball was out of his hand, Brown was hip to hip with his receiver and didn't actually have much separation. However, the pass was beautifully thrown. He placed the ball up the right sideline, allowing Brown to track the ball over his shoulder and out of bounds. I can't get over this pass. It's literally perfect. The end zone view illustrates this even more. Watch how the ball just slips into Brown's hands for this big gain. To go along with this accuracy and placement, I think Murray is very underrated as an anticipatory thrower. I think he has a good sense for when a receiver is breaking, and he has enough power to hit his receiver right after they turn. At times, I want him to get a little bit better at trusting his read on the receiver's hips, but it's still a very solid trade. If a team that runs a lot of quick passing concepts want him to make three-step reads, I think he can execute that offense well. 
His skill set spans multiple play styles, and he shouldn't be pigeonholed into an offense based on his perceived ability to read the field. In my opinion, he can do it all. While Murray does have a great arm to make all the throws at all places around the field, it's his ability to evade tackles that puts him on another level. Even when the coverage down the field is perfect, he commands a spy defender at all times. He did a great job of using his feet to hurt a defense on the ground. In my opinion, I think he's better at using his feet to purely scramble than he is at using his legs to extend plays as a passer. He can definitely do both, but I think he's simply better on the ground than he is at resetting his feet to accurately throw after he moves. To go along with that scrambling and running ability, I feel like at times Murray wants to play hero ball and he doesn't see the field as well as he should. This play versus Oklahoma State illustrates that. If you aren't a college football fan, this game was one of the more entertaining matches of the season. It went back and forth all game and it came down to the final drives to end it. On this particular play, Murray had a wide open receiver in the center of the field with nobody else around him. Instead of taking this easy 15 yard gain, he decided to keep the ball for himself. I don't understand this. He had plenty of space in the pocket, and this is an easy gain that he could have taken. Outside of these hero ball situations, another issue I saw on tape was that Murray rarely steps up in the pocket. He usually stands at the maximum depth, sitting at around 9 yards back, which allows edge rushers around the corner. He rarely will step up inside a collapsing pocket, and he much prefers to spin outside or run backwards in order to get away from pressure. While he's great at avoiding sacks in this manner, at times this will lead him to trouble where he'll completely miss the action down the field. There was this play versus Texas in their first match that immediately comes to mind. You have a play action bootleg at a shotgun and he's moving to his right to set up for his throw. However, he sees the edge rusher coming around the right tackle while the left guard tripped in front of him. Instead of calmly stepping up into the pocket and using his vision to see his receivers, he wanted to run. He wanted to escape when he had a wide open player coming open between zones. I'm not going to sugarcoat this play. This is very bad. Additionally, I feel like at times Murray is too willing to leave a pocket when he doesn't think he has time. Off the left tackle, an edge rusher looks like he's going to get Murray. Instead of stepping up and moving on from his first read, he ducks his head and looks to sprint through the hole in the pocket. He gets taken down for a sack. In my opinion, there's an opportunity up the right sideline. He has an off-man cornerback and a curl route that he can make this throw with timing. I don't think there's an opportunity for the post route up the left sideline, but this curl route on the right is where this ball should have gone. Instead, he took a sack that pretty much ended this drive. After watching the film for most of the season, the problem we have right now is that Murray is great on the extreme sides of a pressure and no pressure situation. When he doesn't have pressure and he has plenty of time, he'll make awesome reads and throws. The same actually holds true when he's under an extreme amount of urgency and heavy immediate pressure. He knows how to act. He responds lightning fast and he can break tackles to get outside the pocket. The issue from my eyes simply comes down to when the pressure is somewhere in between. He's just going to have to get better at distinguishing between pressure that will sack him versus pressure that is annoying but you can still work a pocket. I will note that during the season, Murray did show improvement as the year went on. So please don't take this as a death mark on his scouting report or anything like that. I see this as something he just needs to work on, especially considering that he's only been a full-time starter for exactly one season. In this play, Alabama is playing cover one man while they're bracketing Marquise Brown with the safety. On the left, the Sooners have a trip sponge look and are running a rub concept with a back and top receiver. The idea is that based on Alabama's coverage combos, Oklahoma was hoping to get a rub to quickly pick up the first down. However, Alabama is extremely well coached. They did a great job covering this play. Murray, instead of panicking with Quinn and Williams in his face, stepped up and found his next read. He had a pivot route breaking open over the center of the field. He threw an accurate and quick pass to his target, but the ball hit his receiver in his hands and he couldn't make the catch. On a play like this, there isn't exactly a ton more that you can do if you're a quarterback. This was a good throw under pressure and it should have picked up the first down. In my opinion, how Murray deals with pressure and a pocket collapsing will be key for his success in the NFL. He needs to gain comfort with the fact that he's not going to have a perfect pocket at all times. Now, not to beat a dead horse or anything like that, but I think even though he can scramble and escape a pocket like a champ, he has to get better at feeling pressure with the spatial awareness. He needs to use his senses to put himself in the right place in the pocket in order to make an accurate throw. Versus TCU, he definitely didn't do that. As the right guard was pushed back to help absorb the penetrating defensive lineman, Murray had a wide open area to his left that he should have stepped into. Instead of using good fork to move over there, he stayed on the hash mark and then he threw an ugly looking pass down the field to his target. Before moving on from this play, the other reason why I showed it is because it illustrates another issue that I saw on tape. Murray is too willing to throw with a poor base, totally trusting his arm. Now, I don't exactly blame him for that, he's got a great arm. 
but he would casually throw passes down the field's poor footwork when he didn't have to. Additionally, he would throw to covered receivers when if he looked to his left, he would have had an open check down as well. Again, this does come with time, but defaulting to an overt truss of your arm will create issues in the NFL. Now, with that being said, this isn't the same as what I saw from Johnny Menzel and Patrick Mahomes when they were coming out of college. Murray would rarely just chuck it in order to chuck it. Whereas guys like Manziel and Mahomes would both toss the ball deep down the field and pray for the best at least once or twice a game, Murray didn't do this. He was definitely aggressive, and he definitely trusted his arm to take shots, but the key difference was the level of comfort I saw while he attacked coverage. His 50-50 attempts were more like 60-40 or 70-30, whereas the Johnny Manziel attempts would be more like 20-80 and were very dangerous. Moving on, if there is one thing that I've purposely not talked that much about in this video so far, it's his height and body type. I feel like in the case of Murray, we need to talk about it a little bit more than the other quarterbacks. Frankly put, I don't think Murray's height is an issue. I think he can be successful as a 5'10 or 5'9 quarterback or whatever he ends up measuring at the combine, and I don't think it's going to impact his ability at the next level. Now, when anybody does bring up height, they usually bring up batted passes. What's interesting is that if you look at the top four quarterbacks coming out, Murray actually had the second lowest batted pass percentage of these guys. Meanwhile, a guy like Daniel Jones, who is roughly five full inches taller, had over twice the number and percent of batted passes. I just don't think they're directly related. In my opinion, if you're going to make one valid argument about his body size, the main and really only concern I have is with his ability to take hits. This video was created a few days before the NFL Combine, and all reports are suggesting he's going away in the low 200s. With how much faster and stronger defenders are in the NFL, this is definitely an area of concern that I have. Looking over my notes, I wrote that Murray did a great job of avoiding contact when he could. This season, he only took 18 sacks. Yes, his offensive line was pretty awesome, but he did a great job evading tackles. In the first couple of games this season, he took a few hits that he didn't like, but he obviously learned from that. He slid more frequently, and he purposely stepped out of bounds to avoid big hits. He still does take more downfield shots as a runner than your typical quarterback, but Murray doesn't have a history of injuries or anything like that. The way I look at it is that while this concern is valid, I think it's way overblown. To wrap up this video, the quarterback that I think Murray most resembles is Russell Wilson. When I first turn on his tape, I'll be honest, I saw a lot of Johnny Manziel. I saw a guy that would run around the backfield leaving the pocket when he didn't have to, but was still able to make a clutch throw down the field. However, I was ignoring the subtlety that makes Murray good. The more I watched, the more I liked. He isn't as undeveloped as what many people will lead you to believe. Yes, he still has a lot to work on as we already discussed, but he makes good decisions, he has good foundation of passing skills and coverage reading ability, and he has an arm to accurately place the ball all around the field. Plus, when you factor in his legs to extend plays and scramble outside the pocket, he can do some serious damage. In my opinion, there's no way else to put it. Murray is a freak athlete, but he's more than just an athlete playing quarterback. Yes, he's going to frustrate you at times. He's going to take a sack that makes you scream at your TV. He's going to hold onto the ball and run around circles until your face goes blue. But his playmaking ability will transcend the idea that he's only an athlete that plays quarterback in the NFL. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this scouting report was generously sponsored by my friends at Manscaped.com. If you're in the market for a new below the belt or general full body male grooming kit, I would look no further. This kit features a waterproof electric trimmer called the Lawn Mower that is specially designed to prevent nicks while in the area of your body that you frankly never want to accidentally nick. What's nice is that with the ceramic blade and strong polycarbonate frame, it's very reliable and can withstand all the basic drops. If you're like me, this happens way too frequently. Yes, I fully admit, I wouldn't make for a good running back in the NFL. In addition to this trimmer, this kit also includes an excellent safety razor called the Plow. If you're looking for a close shave on your face or um, uh, other parts of your body, this thing is excellent to give you a nice clean cut. For me personally, I live in the real world equivalent of Winterfell, so I try to keep a full beard at all times. However, while I clearly don't look like Kit Harrington, my beard is much more stylish than his, and that's all to this double-sided stainless steel safety razor. This kit also includes a deodorant and refresher spray, which are both great for on-the-go usage. Now, I was a bit nervous about putting anything like this in my downstairs area, but their Crop Reserver deodorant and their Crop Reviver refresher spray both feel fantastic. If you know the phrase swamp ass and you want to make sure your entire lower half is ready for action, these are two great products included in this package. As a special discount to viewers in this channel, Manscaped is offering 20% off your order if you use the code SAM20. Using this code, you'll also receive a nice shed travel bag, which is good to take these items on the road, and you'll also receive free shipping. I highly recommend giving them a try, especially considering you get a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll have more draft content coming out soon leading up through April, so you make sure you look out for that. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.